whole digitalization of, of our industry has been fairly sudden in the history of photography. In our first digital games was Salt Lake City. You know, we were shooting two meg files and the pictures looked horrendous, but we were getting the pictures out quickly and we are now in the era of getting great imagery very, very quickly. Up in the mountains, we were, you know, the last games we might have cabled it, but that was to a computer. Now the cable's going from the camera straight in and the pictures show up in the main press centre. We edit them, select them and get them out via direct feeds to key newspapers and magazines and then they go on the website. People select pictures off of, off of screens now. It's gone where they're looking at huge prints and you know picture editors and national newspapers get presented by the picture editor big prints and they say that print. It, it is very much they're looking at pictures on a screen in thumbnail format initially. You can have a Helmut Newton on a screen and it doesn't look very good, you know, and it's very hard to pick good pictures and therefore people have tended to shoot tighter by and large so that the image shows up well on a thumbnail and then obviously when you show it full screen it comes and hits you and that can be good but also you still need that sort of generic wide angle that there's a scene setter that's still important but people need to see punchy pictures it's quite important If I could get that right, I'd be sitting in Monte Carlo with a very big cigar, uh, not working for Getty Images. I think video does play a part in it, but then from a, from a sports angle, which we're at, you then get into very difficult rights issues because obviously the big broadcasters own, own the video rights. Maybe the iPad, you know, a lot of talk around that as, as the the delivery mechanism that can generate royalties that can keep the industry going because the media industry is under huge pressure you know you look at magazines like Vanity Fair they're a third of what they were even a year ago advertising's down this huge swell of the digital new age is wonderful but you need to you know there has to be a cost for it because for good journalism and good photography it costs a huge amount of money. The video side is interesting. It is, it, it, it's where I think it's heading, maybe not in the traditional sense, but I don't think people want to see three or four or five minute highly produced clips because you then get into the broadcast game and I don't think we as an agency are necessarily going down that route. There are specialist agencies that Brian Storm in New York who produce very high-end pieces. Um, I, I think the market is short clips. Um, polished, done well, not badly, but done well. I do believe there's a market for that. I've always found it interesting, I mean even 15 years ago when I sort of 10, 15 years ago stopped taking pictures, the talk was around high definition TV and how it was going to kill stills photography. Well the fact of the matter is they shoot from very different angles from a stills photographer and you know yes if a certain major incident happens you do see screen grabs they will get better and better quality no doubt about that but I still don't think they cover as a stills photographer does both in, you know, they're trying to capture a wide area of sport, you know, and a photographer might be concentrating on a player, the expression, um, and it's invariable that, that, that's, that, that, that the TV uh, broadcasters miss things, you know, and the still, stills guys get it. So I do, I do believe there's a, a very good future still for stills, absolutely.